So here at the Mobile World Congress, and who are you? So I'm Gilles from Xalinx, and welcome to the Xalinx meeting room, where we have some very exciting stuff around our new RFSOC, which is a chip integrating a lot of DAC ADC into it. So we'll start by some demonstration that we have on this side, on the, uh, on the, on the side with the RFSOC, and we will end by demonstration that we have with barefoot networks and uh, in-band telemetry that are very exciting. So you call it the, the RF SOC? That's correct. Does it have to do with RF and the yes. chipset? Yes, it's SOC? about integrating RF into a, a SOC chip that allow customer to remove a lot of the uh, components and reduce the bomb cost and the power in the 5G area. RF, is that analog? No, it's digital. It's digital, digital. to analog that we are integrating. So, uh, and you have the FPGA and the ARM and everything? We have FPGA, quad-core ARM, we have the DAC EDC integrated into a single chip. So that's never seen before. And that's very important for the mobile world? or It's very important for uh, antenna, like you want to do massive MIMO, beamforming. It's very important if you want to do uh, broadband units, so the baseband units, sorry. And it's very important as well on the mobile backhaul. Uh, if you want to uh, to play on this world as well. So it's end-to-end -end on the 5G network infrastructure. 5G is very important for the 5G? Yes. It's uh, crucial to have this kind of stuff. It, it's crucial work. for the evolution and the integration that you need for the massive MIMO and the new antennas that you need for the 4.5G and 5G. And as well, crucial for the disaggregation that's happening into the baseband unit and the mobile backhaul. Is it important also because uh, the industry is moving so fast you can't be, uh, you want to use FPGA technology because you want to update things more often and uh, it's more flexible than designing an ASIC that's specifically designed so for something. So everything is around the standards. 3GPP standards are evolving and will continue to evolve because 5G is not only the 5G wireless, but it's also the NB IoT or the IoT and the connected cars. And so the standards will continue to evolve. And so the only way to keep up with the standards is to go FPGA. And customers have asked us to integrate more so they can deliver higher bandwidth, lower latency into the antennas and into the, uh, the, the rest of the network. In, in, the, in, the, in the past, is Silinx a big part of the, this, this market or is it a new thing for you? So we were already, 4G was already a big portion. Uh, we were big already in the 4G market. Not with 3G. 3G was the previous market where the number of, of antennas required was not requiring the flexibility that you are talking about. So 4G already... 4G requiring a lot of new spectrums, yeah. depending on the country, radios, we're looking for different bands already on the 4G. But this is accelerating with the 5G, especially since this is... Not only customers need flexibility that you are talking about, but are looking for lower, lower power and lower latency. And what does the ARM part of the SOC run? Is it so like it, Linux or...? It, it, it can run bare metal, it can run Linux, it can run accelerators, or it can run algorithm as well, uh, that like you will see when people will do the, uh, the demonstration. And uh, is there this concept of an app store for networking? Is it going to be good for you? So it will be good for us, but in fact we are looking for the application to consume the bandwidth, because this is what's pushing the massive MIMO antennas, this is what's pushing the 5G to evolve, Customers want to consume more video, more AR, VR applications, and this is what's pushing the network to evolve in the 5G. All right, so, so what kind of demos do you have around here? So we will have the first demo, and Anthony, Anthony, you will be yeah. the first one up for the RFSOC, so, to, uh, so you, can, you can see uh, what is the integration of the RFSOC, uh, RF into a SOC FPGA means. So it's a new, uh, when was it announced? Uh, it was, it was pre-announced last year, and we are just, making it public with the la latest silicon level first time, first time at Mobile World Congress. So where is this chipset? Anthony? Is it uh, under this one? So the, there? The right. Chipsets. So what I'm, what I'm showing you right here yeah. is the characterization board for the RFSOC. So on this board right now, if you take a look at my screen, what we are doing is we are directly synthesizing, we are directly synthesizing five carriers at band 42. That's uh, 3.5 gigahertz going out into a ballon and we loop it back and we capture that carrier using our RF sampling ADC and we'll mix that down to baseband, capture the information and we can take a look at this on the uh, PC screen right here. So if I just call up the GUI, so this again is the signal that I'm generating from the RF DAC. Again it's 5 by 20 megahertz carriers centered at 3.5 gigahertz. 
and then we use the ADC or RF sampling ADC to directly sample that signal and mix it down to baseband and here you can see the performance of the ADC it's a little hard to see right here but we can achieve an ACLR number approaching 54 dB carrier and the other thing to mention here is that we're about 12 to 13 dB full scale backed off on the ADC so very good performance for our RF sampling ADC. So why is this important? This, uh, wh where is it going to go and what it's going to be used for? Well I think as Gilles was saying earlier on uh, we're seeing a massive increase in the number of channels being used in radios so one way to make that commercially viable is to integrate the RF DAX and ADC into the uh, RF SOC so some of our devices will support up to 16 by 16 channels in a single device and allow you to get the power and the footprint down for these high order MIMO radios that are coming online for 5G. Is this a development board? This is not a development board here, this is a characterization board, but we have development boards coming in the pipe and you'll be able to prototype your radio on the development boards coming very soon. It looks like there's a whole bunch of radios, or, or what is this, antennas, or...? No, so again, these are simply just uh, signal conditioning for the RF signal. So we have a differential RF signal, we have a balance to convert it into a signal end and signal. I'm doing a little bit of filtering, and then it goes back into the ADC where we capture the signal again. All right, and what is this over there? So this is a, a good question. This is a spectrum analyzer from Roden Schwartz. So this is one way for us to evaluate the performance of the DAC. So we can look at the DAC output, and evaluate the performance on a third-party instrument like our, this FSW. And actually, that's a good segue now. We can show you the performance with the uh, amplifiers attached, and that's actually what's been displayed here. So we're actually, the guys will show you <coughs> a DPD in operation here on an 8x8 implementation. So good, so let's switch to uh, Nine yeah, right. with a partner of Xalinx. And so Kevin will take you through the demonstration to show you how to use the RFSOC into a kind of real application and show you all the IPs that NanoSim is developing and the value they are bringing. All right, so hi. Hello, I'm Kevin Tron from NanoSemi. So what are you showing around here? So here we want to fully maximize the potential of this RF yeah. SOC device. Yeah. And <clears throat> we have actually developed, um, if you look at this diagram, yeah. we have actually developed a multi-channel wideband digital front end. That yeah, is, let me jump over here. So, uh, and that is actually integrated together with the RFSOC and by maximizing the true potential of this FPGA fabric, we actually develop eight channels linearization solutions to it. Yeah. And in addition to that, um, we have actually built and developed this um, front end prototype and this prototype actually supports eight channels MIMO system. So currently the design is tuned to operate at the center frequency of uh, 35, 100 megahertz. That is, that is precisely you know, targeting the uh, band 42 application. So what are we looking down here? So here uh, we have a characterization board and we fully maximize the capacity of the board by having a big... Just to speak the way. Okay. By, um, by, uh, we fully maximizing the uh, potential of this evaluation board by utilizing our eight channels of the DAC and ADCs. And each of them is running at a data rate of uh, 491 mega sample per second. And this allows us to uh, truly linearize the signals consists of, for instance, you see here, it's a two uh, 5G component carrier where each is 100 megahertz wide. So the total signal bandwidth we're looking at is over 200 megahertz. All right. And uh, this configuration right here with all those cards is something you built? Yeah, this is, all these, uh, yeah, this is a reference like, example yeah. of one of a typical what is that? Uh, uh, RF yeah. front end module. Yeah. And this module consists of basically a power amplifier suitable for wideband operation and for millimeter, for massive MIMO yeah. application. And we have a standard like anti-aliasing filter feeding into a gas 5 volt uh, high gain high linearity driver that followed by a uh, high power amplifier from NXP device. Cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, showing some more stuff about the RF SOC. Uh, so, and you have more demos here? Demos? Yes. Yes, so let me introduce you to uh, Ambrose. So, on the RF SOC, you remember I mentioned that we, were, we can use this part for the baseband unit or for the mobile backhaul. So we have a dedicated RFSOC part where we have only SDFEC, the soft decision FEC, which is required for the baseband unit and for the mobile backhaul. 
So Ambrose will take you through the uh, demonstration. So this here is a the right over here. So this is an evaluation yep. board for the RFSOC. Yeah. Um, so, this actually, so this is an evaluation board for the RFSOC, which has the 28DR, which has the SD effect, the soft decision forward error correction block inside. So there's eight of these in this chip. This board we've connected here to a GUI, where essentially what we're going to show in this demo is the following. We have a data generator. It goes through an encoder so we can get encoder statistics yeah. for throughput and of, the of an encoder. We then modulate that signal and inject errors, feedback through to a demodulator, and then decode again, and basically check the statistics and throughput of a decoder as well on the hard blocks that are encoded. So if you just jump to the GUI here, you can see this is a performance demo where we have a dial for the encode and a dial for decode. Is essentially what we do is we choose our code for so 5G or Wi-Fi or whatever your code may be. So we, we support LDPC turbo encoder and LDPC encoder decoder and turbo decoder. Uh, so if I run this, you'll see that basically now we can get up to 22 gigabits per second on the encode and three gigabits per second on the decode. Um, so, and then we also, so this is pretty high, this, and we have a, as I said, there was eight on a device, so we can have scale that to There's up to eight, of what? eight soft decision effect, forward error correction blocks, hard blocks that are, are not in the PL. So what I mean by that is you actually have a specific hard block in, so this is the PL of a chip. You have a hard block, like an ASIC type block for just to perform encoding and decoding. And uh, so error this connection uh, is important in this kind of bucket? So very important in that you're a channel, as you're sending data through a channel, it gets uh, noise, basically yeah. comes through the channel, come, come through the air, can come through cables, etc. Yeah. So ha you need to be able to correct that error, those errors, so your final so you video or whatever is... Specific SOC just for that uh, market, for that Exactly, that exactly. Uh, All right. Good. All right. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you, and thank you. And so let's go to the last one which is not purely related to the RFSOC, but it's related yeah. to how to use FPGAs into the next generation networks, which is the NFV applications, where inbound telemetry is starting to be very important. For the next generation network, you need to collect more and more data to be able to process those data to, in order to be able to manage the networks. So that's the next generation of NFV that we are showing live here, and that Robert will take you through. NFV, it stands for... Uh... Network Functional Virtualization. Network Function Virtualization. And is that also to do with the potentially App Store for networking? Or that's another... Th that's, that's another story. But uh, virtualization is going to be important for this. Exactly, because then you can really put the application wherever you want into the network. And virtualization works great with the FPGA of silence. Yeah, because as soon arm. as you have virtualization, you need to have acceleration. And then FPGAs and, or MPSOCs or... FPGAs with ARM processors can be very useful for that. All right. Okay. Yeah. So hi. Hello. So this is a in-band network telemetry yeah. demo showing yeah. off. Yeah. The mic. Oh. Yeah. Uh, th this is an in-band network telemetry yeah. demo showing off uh, interoperability between three uh, companies. So we have over here a Inventex switch powered by a Barefoot Tofino programmable data plane. Here we have a Inventex switch uh, with a Barefoot Tofino chip for the uh, switch data plane. And then over here we have two servers, one running Xilinx uh, smart dicks, uh, one for an INT transit hop, one for an INT sync hop. And at the top we have a server running Barefoot's Deep Insight. So what we're doing here is we generate traffic, we send it through the switch, through various hops, simulating a real world <coughs> network. Um, and with the power of INT, we get real time data about uh, packets that are going through the switch. We can keep track of things like ingress and egress timestamps, uh, queue occupancy, uh, hop latencies through the switch or through the smart NIC. Uh, for each individual packet, the moment that is actually inside the switch. And then uh, at the end of the network, we have an INT sync node, which will collect all of this data, pull it out of the packet, and send it off to Deep Insight for analysis, which will then show this to your network operators who can use this to analyze their network and make changes to their flows and 
deal with anomalies that arise in various things. So, um, can you show us one of these, or is this, or is this what's inside here? Uh, so this those? is what's inside. So this is a uh, Xilinx. This is the the Xilinx programmable uh, chip that's running our SmartNIC architecture. Uh, we use P4 to program it, so we is have. It product people can buy this. The whole uh, yes, people can buy this. So what we have are two versions of this running inside of our network. One, one's running as a INT transit node programmed with P4 to collect data about the uh, the packet's path through the BNF. Yeah. And the second one is implementing an INT sync, which will pull out the data after the entire packet has exited the system. Yeah. But, no, okay. Okay. So, uh, so, so this this is like brand new. This area right here is. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so this is pulling together a lot of new technology. So P4 is a emerging language. It's been around since 20, uh, 2014, but it had a recent update for uh, to 2016. All right. And we're using that to program both of the switches. INT is a spec that's currently being developed. Yeah. Um, to determine which types of data will be interesting and how to format the packets as they're going through the switch and the smart mix. And 